cooperation with the OSC executive structures throughout the year. Ministers, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are all aware that this year has not been business as usual for the OSC. The crisis in and around Ukraine has not only revealed a deepening east-west divide, but also called into question fundamental principles of security. Instability and insecurity are growing in the OSC region and beyond. The crisis in Ukraine caught the world by surprise, yet as it escalated, the OSC responded quickly and effectively. Our inclusive platform for dialogue and our flexible toolbox enabled us to take rapid action. Every major OSC structure is engaged in Ukraine. The institutions, including the Parliamentary Assembly, the Secretariat, and the Office of the Project Coordinator in Kiev. And we have acted in close coordination with many partners, beginning with the UN, in line with Chapter 8 of the UN Charter, whose operationalization was at the center of our Security Days discussions this year. But the most visible sign of OSC engagement is the special monitoring mission to Ukraine. Within, within 24 hours of the March 21st decision authorizing the mission, we had first respondents on the ground. Today, 341 monitors are deployed in 10 locations across Ukraine, including Donetsk and Luhansk, to monitor, facilitate the escalation, and report. By January, the SMM should reach its full strength of 500 monitors, with 350 deployed in the east. In September, the Minsk agreements tasked the SMM with monitoring the ceasefire and Ukraine's border with Russia. So now we have civilians running what is essentially a peacekeeping operation, but without military support. Our monitor security is our top concern, but it also constrains their ability to carry out their mandate. We should applaud their courage and commitment, but we also need your firm political support to create the space for SMM to operate effectively and safely. Eight monitors were held captive by separatists for a month last spring. More recently, SMM armored cars have repeatedly come under fire. These actions against our mandate and our monitors, your monitors that is, must be firmly condemned. The crisis in and around Ukraine has also affected the broader OSC agenda, especially the protracted conflicts in Moldova and the Southern Caucasus, which continue to require OSC engagement. At the same time, we must not overlook other security challenges in our region. We must enhance our efforts to combat transnational threats, in particular those related to terrorism. We should also strengthen our relationship with OSC partners for cooperation. Dear Ministers, as the OSC has shown that it can deliver, it also needs your political vision to guide it and sufficient resources to achieve its full potential. Our response to the Ukrainian crisis is negatively affecting the OSC's ability to carry out its other mandates. Regardless of the current SMM budget, resources are being diverted from other core activities including flagship projects like the Border Management Staff College in Dushanbe, which may be forced to suspend activities in January if no additional funds are forthcoming. Compared to 2013, this year we are 9 million euros short on extra budgetary funding overall, which is affecting important work in all three dimensions carried out by field operations, the Secretariat and the institutions across the OSC region. Meanwhile, Despite growing challenges that the OSCE is being called on to address, the unified budget continues to decrease in real terms. We will continue to face challenges in 2015, the 40th anniversary of the Helsinki Final Act, and I look forward to working with incoming Serbian chairmanship to address them. Allow me to assure all of you of the continued commitment of our staff, as well as my own personal commitment to assist in participating states in implementing your decision and supporting your efforts to restore peace and stability in our region. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson.